gentlemen, what I give you here is RO number 19 and RO number 20. These are two absolutely beautiful specimens of the Palomar 300A. Um, both a little bit different generations, different versions, but they have roughly the same job. What I mean by this is if we look in the inside of these, we'll see that some of the coiling is set up different. Let's look here, our tank coil. Tank coils are a little different. Tuners are the same. And I haven't counted the pins in the socket yet. They should be the same. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 pins in this one. Now, 12 in this one as well. This is a chrome top. It's in really good shape. The black top it's got a little bit of dirt on the paint. We're going to, or the vinyl, we'll fix that. Um, but these are really two good fine examples of these two amplifiers technologies. I've said this for years and years. My first time over a thousand watts peak was on something like this, a white face, but with a chrome top. And uh, I've always thought the black face with the black top of the black case was the coolest looking one ever. They made them with chrome bottoms, chrome tops, or somebody took a chrome top and put them on the bottom. It, I've seen them all the way across the, the, the gambit on how these are put together. I've seen them with oversized tubes in them. Some of them, there's a million little tricks with these old sweep tubers. I personally don't like to work on them anymore. The parts are too hard to find and um, <clears throat> they are never ever ever in this good of condition. If we look on the inside of these, this steel, they put some kind of aerodite coating on it. Well, you can see the beginnings of corrosion back here in the back corner of this cabinet, just a little tiny bit. You see this little white cum spot back here? Usually the whole thing gets corroded out within two seconds. Any kind of moisture and they're a pain in about to work on as soon as they get corroded on the inside. And guys will look at the outside and be like, oh, the face looks great. Mm, no, no, no. The inside guts mean more to me than the face. The face can look like a hacked up Tijuana donkey show hooker and the inside be clean. It's gonna run like a, a rape scolded monkey, okay? We're trying an experiment with these two. The experiment is I've got both of the kinds of power supplies because there were two different ty types of power supplies um, for these units. And I should, around here in a box someplace, have the tubes to go for all different three versions of this. The 6LF6, the 6LQ6, and the 8950 version. Around here someplace I should have enough of those tubes to stick in here and at least demonstrate it running. So he's sending these to me just to check them out, test them, certify they work, make sure the preamps work, the relays work, all that kind of stuff. Because really what it comes down to is even if I've got junk ball tubes to put in here and I can show all that works, all you ever really have to do to these is one, make sure that your filtering caps on the bottom of the amp, which we're gonna to get to here in a minute are good. And two, make sure it's got good tubes in it. And every once in a while, you might have to change out a light bulb. That's about the only thing that can really go wrong. I mean, in theory, I shouldn't even have to put tubes in this. Plug it in, turn on, make sure I got all the right bolts in the right places, and this amp will work, as long as you got good tubes in it. So, let's go ahead and take the bottoms off, and let's look at our filter caps on the bottom and see if they're leaking any, because usually they, they leak. We've, I've got a few extra filter caps, but we'll see, we'll see what we got going on here. There's this piece of paper taped over the top. So I called a customer and I said, hey man, what is happening? He says to me, he goes, what's up? I said, well, 
are we, you want me to use my tubes to test it? And he goes, no. I said, well, um, did you send tubes? And he goes, yeah. They're in a box about the size of a shoe box. I said, they are, huh? He goes, yeah, there's like 13 of them in there, individually wrapped. They're all in toilet paper tubes. I said, oh, okay. Now I've got probably 10 Maritron AL1500s and half of them came in boxes like this that said DX Engineering on them. This is not the size of a shoebox. But it was sitting right next to these amplifiers. And I went and I looked at that real quickly and I went, no. That's not it, so I picked the box up and I moved it. I moved probably 50 amplifiers, went and looked behind amplifiers on my shelf. I found boxes of sweep tubes for stuff. None of them went to these amplifiers. I started looking at about 3 o'clock and it's now 7.30. After completely being discouraged and thinking, my God, did I throw the amplifiers out? Did I, what'd I do? Did I throw the tubes away? Did I throw the box away? Did I not unpack it? Was it not delivered? I mean, every kind of thought that you could have, I had. I turn back over to where I started and I look over And on the side of this box, this is what I saw. And I went, okay, I'm a dumbass. So I picked the box up and flipped the piece of paper over on the box and went, mother effer. Guess what? This is the box. So in the previous segment, I proceeded to lie to you guys. I holy hard. I did, I did. I miss smoking some days. I don't miss how it smells. Oh, smell of, oh. Oh, God, I miss smoking. You know, because this voice, this honey poured over gravel voice that I have, I earned it. I smoked two and a half packs of cigarettes a day for ever. I started smoking when I was 12 or 13. I think it was one day after I lost my virginity. I figured out the chicks that smoked that were my age were kind of slutty and boy it was on from there. Just saying. Saying the two things went hand in hand, but they might have. Oh God, I miss the smell. What I don't like is how it makes me smell like a rancid, freaking soured vinaigrette ashtray. So I don't miss smoking because of that. Needless to say, myself, I've got to come out here on Front Street and say, "Bbi I lied," because I, I lied. Shipped a piece of wood. So this box was filler. Oakley doakley. Intermixed amongst these last several hours, my wife decides she's going to come out to her truck and put all of her new speakers in her truck. I got to teach my wife how to solder. I got to teach my wife how to change plugs on her speakers. I'm tired. I'm tired. 
But at the end of the day, I was successful, even though I was stupid. And I went fast when I should have gone slow. And at the end of the day, shit still got done. It just took me a lot longer than I needed to. And I feel like on most of these RO repairs, I've been going too fast and it's been costing me time by trying to go faster than what I should be going. So, I'm gonna try to slow down, man. What do we have for tubes? I will say this, the individual toilet paper tubes is some good ass wrapping. And the toilet paper's clean. So we got six LF6. We're gonna go here. Six L. C, D, okay, heater to six, obviously, sensitivity to 48, socket 21, reset, turn on, let's go. I need an L sharp A. Let's let this tube heat up. I had a gentleman in a YouTube comment today ask me if this particular tests, this particular tube tester tests tubes for guitar amplifiers. And my answer to that question was yes. Emissions shorts, test one. I found 24 volt tubes I didn't know I had. I found a whole box of 8950s I didn't know I had. Uh, six kill, six LQ6s, six JF6s. This isn't looking too hot, yo. That is a hair under 50. It's a bad sign, brother. wife lied to me. She said she was going to take her truck on a test drive. She just pulled up and I seen her walk up on the security camera and she had a ton of shit in her hands. I have a feeling she went and got us dinner. Shorts. Phone rang the entire time. Entire time. I mean, I'm not cheating nothing here. That is like 38%. Yeah, it ain't getting no better. Well, shit. It's the FU factor. Fun and unfun. Fun part is looking like some kind of 
genius when I make one of these rattle traps go. The unfun bit is the hours that you spend beating your head against the wall trying to get the simplest things in front of you to work. It's, mm. Call it the FU syndrome. one while we're waiting for it to warm up okay oh poor girls they've been run hard and put away wet like wet wet and then they burn the barn down around them this is a 5%, 10% tube. That's a sad deal right there. Okay. You ever watch somebody test these? The trick is to watch somebody that's testing them. What do they have the... Uh, Little gain knob, the little sensitivity knob at. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. We'll unpack and prep here. Paper tubes. It's a really good idea, dude. Eureka! Oh, no, no. Come on. No. Okay, so this thing says 60, right? Oh my god, now it looks 120%. Good to go. Nope. Sensitivity needs to be a 48. Just need six that are not completely dead. Tube even lighten up? It is. says this is zero. But it's not showing any shorts or anything. And my tube tester just took a dump. Something went wrong with this socket. Negative Ghost Rider. 
Here it comes. Okay. This is a special ed tube. We'll come back to it. definitely the unfun portion of the business it's all fun depending on how you look at it I guess oh come on come on go oh, come on don't slow down come on you can do it you can do her all night long if you want to come on yeah buddy Whoa, we in the green now 70 come on come on Come on, oh. Give me 80, come on, give me 80. Almost 80. Baby. Baby. I was just sharing with the boys on YouTube how you just put all the speakers in your truck all by yourself. Well, I had some assistance. Well, I told them I taught, taught you how to solder. And, you know, she's built full of amplifiers, y'all. What are you doing? Just checking on you. Where'd you go? We brought home a little KFC if you want some. Ooh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's in the kitchen if you want it. I'll be in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> we'll call that 75% on that last one. No shorts. Come out. I just need one set that works. Just one. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Keep moving. Ooh, 70. Just thinking about it. It's 80% through the end of its life. Call this one 75. 70. Put those two together. Come on, Daddy needs a home run today. Daddy just needs a home run today. Oh, the FU factor. Fun and unfun. I did stereos and all kinds of stuff for a lot of years, and I can't. I hate doing it. Pulling body panels off. And I hate all of that. I don't mind doing it for myself. But I hate doing it for other people. I don't. Man, come on. They're in the deject pile. Oh man. Am I gonna have enough to even do a test on any of this? So this one's at uh, 10, that one's at 40, that one's at 10, it's 38 and a 50. 
So you use the 40 and the 50 as a driver set. That was a dead short, that's 38%. Oh, come on, yeah, buddy. Come on, buddy, come on. Come on, daddy needs four good driver final tubes. Come on. I gotta look like a hero on YouTube, come on. It's all about looking like a hero on YouTube. There's nothing about making a good product. Just gotta look like a hero, right? Come on. Oh, 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 oh. 79%, percent, 78%. I can sit here and hold this button and I can week maybe another two or three percent out of it if I sit here and hold this button for 10 minutes. I did a video one time where I tested a, three, a single 3500Z. I used an SB220 and I took this guy's tube. It was all smoked out. It was brown on the inside. So much of the filament structure burned up. I loaded up the amplifier and I did it with a, new, a single tube. Had a single brand new 3500Z in it. Loaded the amplifier up and went, okay. Pulled out, pulled out the brand new tube, stuck brown tube in hole. Made sure it didn't have any shorts on it, put high voltage on it and ran it up. And it put out like a third of what the other tube put out. And it was hilarious to me to watch all the comics. I mean, I mean um, comments. These people that were experts show up and tell me how I'd done everything wrong. Well, you should have retuned it. And I'm like, why? What difference would it have made? Well, the capacitance level of the tube is right. So that all the tubes were made within a certain spec, say 10% tolerance. Uh, me retuning the amplifier with one tube is not going to make a difference of like 500 watts. It's not. And the tube did like 125 watts. The other one did like 750, 800 watts. I realized then, with that video, that I better have some thick ass skin, 35%. These aren't bad, they're just super low in emissions, right? I mean, somebody run them hard. And when they saw the power running, running down, they just, no, nope, we're gonna put it on the shelf. So that single, that single video, I learned a lot. Technically, if I was to do it that way, I should have checked two tubes. Put the bad tube in with another good tube, because each tube has its own, um, a little bit of resistance that adds to the circuit and that dictates the length of the tank coil in a lot of ways for frequency and stuff. So, my argument was, they told me my whole test was completely invalid because the tank coil was too short. And I'm like, you guys, we're comparing an apple to an apple. And if I have one tube that I know is brand new and at 100% and I'm showing you with this tank coil, it does, we'll say 750 watts. And I change over to another tube. Is the circuit actually perfect for, no, it's not. But the point is, if I go to this other tube, which is brown, it looked like somebody taking a little piece of poop and swizzled around on the inside of the glass smoked out brown on the inside like it smoked two packs a day for 30 years right damn it and it only puts out 150 watts the tube's done it's lucky it's not shorted over right man i learned also from that video i don't give a shit what's said in the comments i'm not scared my test was valid. The tube was at the end of its life. You know, the only thing I didn't show is how much grid it was pulling between A and B and that kind of stuff. I just simply based it on the watt meter and said, this tube's probably bad. And then out of my own money, I took and I returned the guy his tube, right? I said, sorry, man, this tube's about ready to be done. It's technically still works, but it's really low on output. Man, people had a field day with that in the video for some reason. This, I mean, this is way back in the beginning. If you wanted to go look at it, you'd, 
and you'd have to scroll back through like 900 and something thousand, 2000, it, even if YouTube's even hosting it. YouTube's really weird. Sometimes they'll take down videos and it won't even let, let you have them hosted unless you know the, the, the name to go look for it. It's weird. This is 20% on a, on a rough day. So I can make it read like a hero here. That's at 100% sensitivity, but the book says 48. It's 20. That's rough. 20 percent. Okay. Well, my old friend, I love you. I'm talking to my tube tester now. I took you out of a pile of garbage. I completely recapped you, reserviced you, built you a new hinge with all thread. Freaking love this tube tester. I've had many others now show up since I bought this one where guys are like, hey man, I got a better tube tester than that. I don't have to hold the lid shut with uh, freaking window screen rubber. Like, yeah, I like my tube tester. It is mine. It's not like anybody else's. It's got a little corks. And that's okay. I like my little corks in my tube tester. Because it's mine. Okay, this is our special ed tube that was shorted. That's a 35, that's a 10. That is a 10, that's a 38. This is a 20, this is our 50 and 40, our 78, 75 and 70%. Okay, so this is going to get moved over to the final stage, and then we're going to use a 40 and a 48 as our driver. So we're not going to get the full thousand watts out of this that we could. We're going to get probably 800, 750 to 800 watts. I have a feeling. So instead of making you guys have to skip forward in the video further and be bored, um, let me package these and put these all away. And we'll get on to uh, working on them things. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, so now we're testing all the caps. These are our high voltage caps here and here. These are some of the cleanest specimens of these high voltage caps I've ever seen. These, the gray can ones, I call them gray cans, the, the ones that have got um, gray heat shrink on the inside of them. When these go bad, they'll come out the, it comes out the positive side and it'll piss out this white substance. And when it dries, the, the jizz that comes out of these caps is white. The jizz that comes out of these caps is a yellow when it dries for whatever that's worth. I usually can get away with testing the high volt caps in line because the bleeder resistors are fairly high in resistance and it doesn't overload the, the tester and say that, oh, it's in circuit leak. This cap over here on the board, the same circuit by the way, this and this is the same circuit. Um, I have to lift one of the legs of the cap, take it out of circuit, otherwise it'll say that it is leaking in circuit. So this cap is still way good. This is a uh, 16 volt 1000 UF and this is reading 132 UF. So it's still a good cap. This one here reads um, 1200 UF. This one here reads 84.4 and this one reads 84.4. Remember we got the bleeder in circuit here. So. Kind of a little hood tactic I learned is that if I pulled these out, they'd read 100 ish, but they got the resistor pulling on them. So we'll come over here and do this one next. Let me get this put back together. Okay, so these caps are really good 123 or 121, 122. This one's really good 1437. So this was a problem that we're going to fix here in a minute. 
either this broke off or wasn't soldered down all the way and came loose from whatever actions. So I got to pull this board up anyhow to fix this. So we'll go ahead and we'll test these next. As cold as cold could be solder joint. Survey says Nice. Okay. Well, if I had a shop assistant, I'd be like, bring me my Variac. The next step, now that we know all the caps are good. I love on this particular amp, the high voltage is actually put through a real relay. And on this one, it's, it's not. It's put through it. Yeah. Anyhow. Let me assemble this back together, put some tubes in it, time to turn it on with a Variac. So just got done putting a little bit of sewing machine oil on the, the felts on this, on this fan. It looks like that'll turn okay. Let's see, we're going to put it in high power mode, high power AM, preamp off, operate power on. Put my hand on the transformer over here. Not that I'm trying to cause an arc through my body, but I can feel if there's a problem here, I can feel the transformer starting to load and I'll feel resistance in this thing. Which I don't feel anything. Great. Power plug was loose. Oh, well, it turned on. Nope. Hundred, hundred and ten. Right at one hundred and ten volts. Thousand watt, thousand and average, five watt slug in a purse. So purse. Let's put the standby. Hello, 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 hello. All right. So let me turn the mic gain up here. Hello, audio. Great pass through tune. All right. Key action. So I've detuned it. Where's my flat blade? Here it is. Hello. Hello. Take 600 watts peak with no drama. Any day of the week. Hello. That's all we're going to get out of it. Okay, so now. Right, all right, all right. Little aluminum fan blades, I can bend them all, or I can just slide the hole. The jam forward. Okay, so now I 
We have two tuners that we have access to. This is the input tune. This input tune for the four tube, and this is the input tune for the two tube. Hello. Okay, so you guys understand what I'm doing. When I click this into low power, I bypass the drive section completely. What they used to do in the day is they derated this box. If you put it in high power, your input tune was like through the roof. No one cared because nobody had built in SWR bridges back when this thing was really badass. Okay, so this god dang cap would be screwed down just as tight as tight could get. Let's go up here and let's look at this 5 watt slug in reverse. So watch. We're in low. The input tune's so messed up that it wouldn't even latch up, right? There's so much reflex coming back. Hello. See what I'm saying? But if we take and we back this tuner out, Hello. that allows us to do is to tune the input tune to the four pill or the four tube section until it's really low. What a lot of guys would do is they would literally, with every sense of the word, drill a hole in the bottom of the cabinet. So they could adjust this from the outside, turn the amp up on its side and adjust it. I don't know why, you just take the bottom off, you only need to adjust it once, but I've watched a lot of guys do that over the years. Oh, okay. Here. Hello. Audio. It's about the best we're going to get out of it there. Let's come here. Hello. Let's walk these back and forth. That's 650 watts. That's all we're going to get out of it. With tubes that are flatter than a... Yeah. <clears throat> flat. Tubes are just flat. So anyhow, let's certify this out. We're going to put this into standby real quick. Preamp is working. So we'll put this in standby. Hello, 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 hello. This is our input pass through tune. So this is the RF's ability to pass through the box with resistance. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Legit, it's that low. The lowest I've ever seen with a Palomar 300A. So, let's just say, we are golden. This amp is good to go. Short of fixing that one resistor and adjusting the fan, just a ton of time testing. We're good. Let everything cool off. I'm gonna put the fan on top of this, let it cool down, and then we'll jump over to this one here. Fun, right? Yeah, buddy. Okay. Here we go on a white-faced one. Oh yeah. No problems, here we go. Let's get on up through here. Okay, well, stand by. Hello, one, two, pass through tune. It's pretty good, let's put it into operate. Hold on. All 
right. Let's find it. Down to low power, hit O one two. Back up to high power, hit O. Hit O. Hit O. Boy, <clears throat> hold on to your dirty water. Okay. Let's put this in AM. And high power. Let's go here. Hello. 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 Something wrong with tank well, it's gotta be. Gots to be. Why it broken? Have a tube not light up or something? Yes. There we go. It's great. Hello. Where am I at? 105, 110. Hmm. Let me futz with it, you guys. Oh, well, we're down in the weeds now, boys. So, <clears throat> I, uh, this is a later version, right? It's the one that could not get the, the amp to go over maybe 350 watts. Well, come to find out it's only got 400 volts on the plate atop the tubes. I'm checking input and RF and all this stuff and it's all matching up. I'm like, well, let's get out the high volt probe and let's measure what we got for volts. And the plate volts are like, they're like half of what they should be. And I got them looking and these wires here this is an afterthought, and this rectifier is new. I'm like, what? So I took the whole board up and I flip it over. Let's take a look at the bottom side of the board. This is why you guys are soaking that up. 
I mean, I went and I probed the, uh, the line voltage coming from the transformer, and it was spot on. Now, it was really easy to check that because I have the other unit here. And so this other unit that's over here, the one that I just brought over on the table you guys can't see yet, has got 800 volts on the top of the tubes. But it's got the same amount of voltage coming in from the, the transformer. And I'm like, ah, B. So let's pan over here and let's look at this board. Okay, let's slowly take that in. Let's come over here and look at this one. Pan back over and look at this. Pan back over and look at this. I. This trace that they've cut and isolated here to this capacitor, this is a voltage doubler. And I'm like, wait a minute. Somebody intentionally nerfed this amplifier to where it would never do anything more than about maybe 400 watts, 300 watts. I'm like, why? They eliminated half of the voltage doubler. This is our bleeder. This is one bleeder resistor and it attaches to here. And then our other bleeder resistor attaches to here. They doubled the bleeder resistance across this one output, but then they are eliminated half of the ground. And I'm going, we're running on half a volts is the main story here. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna repair this trace, remove this jumper, which is a hack job. The guys at Palomar didn't do work like this. Remove this, remove this, repair that, repair this, check the bleeders. I'm gonna pull this block rectifier thing out of here. I'm gonna replace that with the, uh, the one amp, 1000 volt diodes that are supposed to be in there. And we're gonna try this again. And I can almost guarantee we're gonna have double the volts now. Just saying. I'm saying. Okay. So, <clears throat> a couple things. Talk about a couple different things. First off, when I first went and tested this, I could only get a couple hundred watts out of it. And I thought, hmm, what did I do wrong? So I started looking at it, and I went, I'd intermixed the low output drive tubes in the final section. So <laughs> high output tubes driving low output final session. So I flopped those around, I got up to about maybe 350 watts, right? And that's when I started checking plate volts. So we've got this modified over. Now, I have to say a disclaimer. I don't wanna be really clear when I make this disclaimer. Palomar had two, that I'm aware of, two different transformers that they used. There was one for the 6L, 6J, 6Qs, okay? That's this amplifier and the other one. They had another one that was for the higher voltage, like 8950s and that kind of tubes. There was a third one that I know of that was for a completely different filament, okay? Very rare, that particular version. These two work off of these sweep tubes here. Okay, the 6LF6, this is the most common one. The 8950 version is also a very common one. I assumed that because both of these two, both of these amps had 6LF6s in them, they'd be the same. Now, I don't know. I'm not the great Palomar Whisperer. I've worked on a lot of these damn things though. That maybe the transformer maybe the transformer that went with this one, for some reason, had higher voltage. But I've yet to see it. I have four other Palomars that are like here, and I've pulled each one of those out, and I've checked the, the voltage that comes out of the transformer, and they're all in the 800 volt range, and they're all the same 200 and some volt input. Okay, so 400 and some, then you double that over, so you get your 800 volts. I don't know. 
So that leaves the question open because the way this was set up was with a, oh, I've been doing this to myself all day. Here it is. This little rectifier they had in there, which was obviously aftermarket. Um, maybe there's a different transformer in it. Maybe the transformer popped in that other power supply that went with this amp that's at the guy's house, the actual owner of this amplifier's house. And somebody put an aftermarket transformer in it and they spec'd it so that it had, you know, higher volts on it. And that's the reason that the, the uh, filter board was set up the way it was. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I could tell by looking at the solder work that parts had been pulled off and new parts have been put in its spot. So I'm going to go with the fact that it was not something's not kosher there. On the upside of things, I put 2,000 volt 3 amp diodes in this thing. Okay, we've got lots of headroom. The filter capacitors, on the other hand, <laughs> they're going to show you a problem. So, if I was this gentleman, for safety's sake, I would run the power supply that came with the black-faced Palomar on both boxes and I'd be done with it. Okay. You can send me that other power supply and I'll hook it up and test it and we'll see what we got for volts. I can offer that up. But for right now, as soon as I put the appropriate amount of plate volts on this thing, all my other problems disappeared. The output power issues went away, the input issues I was having went away, everything settled down and it worked just like a Palomar. Let's run it through its paces and let me show you what I mean. So let's look at where we got the knobs adjusted. Oh, and so back, let's get back to the beginning of the story. These are our drive tubes, the 50 and the 38. I thought, man, maybe I'd run the tubes into the ground, something. I retested all the tubes. I put all the high end tubes, the high output tubes over here. I went and grabbed some of my own 6L F6s and put them in here as drivers. One's at 90, the other one's at 110%. So we're running full chooch. The output section is down in the 70s and the 80s, right? So we're not going to get that full 800 out of it. We're just not. But just changing out these two tubes in the back, I want you to see how it changes the output total. Okay. I think I said all the English that I was supposed to speak, all the words. So let's look at where the hash marks are on the white face box. All right. I set this meter up so that full chooch is at this last box, the box before the last one. It's right here. Hopefully to keep you from banging up the meter and you get in full bore when you go and get new tubes, because I know you're going to go get new tubes. All right, my man. So here's your thousand watts. Let's get this that oh, there we go okay thousand watts in peak thousand on average five watts slug in reverse back from the bird ten thousand watt dummy load first let's put this in standby at oh one two let's pan up here to the top at oh one two that's your pass through tune it's actually really good for a palomar if you see how the circuit was laid out you'd be like oh yeah it's not too bad Okay, we're going to flip the amp and operate. We're going to start in low power. Hello, 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 hello. That's low power. Here's high power setting. Hello, 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 hello. The tunes are good. I mean, they're good. I'm going to go and I'm going to put, uh, put uh, paint on the Arcos so they can't jiggle loose in shipping. But it'll give you a good reference point. Once again, hello, one, two. Putting 30 whole watts in this amplifier. Hello, where do you go? Hello, where do you go? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello. Call that 825 and some change. What 
what I was doing was I was playing the guy on channel 27 or channel 26 or the guy that talks on five for a few minutes just there goes hey oh trying to peek the box out get every last little bit of pubic energy out of it he can get Hello. This amplifier runs like a Ricky Talk Tip Top piece of equipment now. That's the way it's supposed to run. It done. It done. It's done. Sideband delay works. Listen to the clicks. Click, 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 click. We done. I'm happy. I'm satisfied you're not going to have any problems with either one of these boxes. Period. It is 5.50 on this beautiful Father's Day. I am working. Even though I spent all morning with my family, they decided they wanted to go do other things and relax, and I don't blame them. But I'm done out here. I'll put this baby in the off position. We're going to put it in cool down mode. I'm going to put the beautiful tins back on it. And I'm going to very carefully wrap it back up. And we're going to send it home to you, my man. You are done. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just food for thought. Listen to me about my transformer thing. Just the idea that popped in my head. I was like, maybe somebody did something a little funky. We don't have the transformer here, so we don't know. You know, I've got three of these transformers. One of them is a high volt. Two of them are for these 6, 6L, 6Q, 6F lower volt tubes. So, is what it is. The pinouts are the same between all the different amplifiers. So, we don't know. I can work with what I got, and I can work to what I know. Brother, I appreciate you sending this out. Hopefully this has been a good, pleasant experience for you. Um, I'm just grateful that I was able to get this figured out and running for you. Your light bulbs are good. Your switches are all good. Your tuners are all good. The inside of the cabinets is pristine. Um, when I put this all back together underneath, of course, I did it in true BBI fashion. I made sure to clean everything with rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush. You'll never even know I was in there. The traces are all been repaired. So unless you drop that board, there's physically no way to know the next person that, unless they somehow magically buy that, watch this YouTube video, they'll never even know I was in there. It goes for both boxes, so. On that note, gentlemen, I want to say thanks to Penta, Siglent, Excess, uh, MacMan, Bird, Coaxial Dynamics, Matchlet. Um, every single one of you guys are tuned in to follow along with my saga. I want you guys to keep in mind that you just sat through over an hour worth of ad-free content that is brought to you exclusively by the support of the Patreons. I don't like the ads on YouTube. YouTube doesn't pay worth a damn. Um, I've got so many Patreons supporting me now. I cannot believe it. I'm so grateful for everybody's love and support. Um, I decided one of the things that they could do, that I could do, because they're loving on me to love on everybody on YouTube is to make my content ad free. So I want to give a big thanks to the Patreon guys. Also, they just got a huge behind the scenes view of what's going to happen in this next month. Um, shit's going to get crazy. And of course, their support is what allows me to go do some of this crazy fun stuff I'm going to go do. I am taking a camera with me. You guys will see more to come on this later. On this note, I want to say thanks, gentlemen. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful for every single one of you guys. I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video, which starts tomorrow at 6.30 in the morning when I come back out here. Gentlemen, my name is BBI, and I say click, click, click.